presenteremo una mostra dal titolo International Art. Perché una mostra dal titolo International Art? International Art eh, intende in qualche modo riflettere sul plurilinguismo dell'arte attuale, ma al tempo stesso valorizzare l'eclettismo creativo eh, che si può riscontrare nelle opere degli artisti che espongono e eh, al contempo anche rinnovare e in un certo senso valorizzare il dialogo, un dialogo internazionale, quindi creare in un certo qual modo una Repubblica delle Arti eh, come piattaforma democratica eh, di scambio tra artisti di tutto il mondo. Ora siamo qui con Tina Stokes, eh, che è originaria del West Midland e è un'artista, come potete vedere, eh, altamente affascinata nella, dalla resa degli effetti atmosferici, così come dai contrasti tra luce e ombra e dalle suggestioni della pittura di Tarn. E a questo punto io vorrei chiedere a Tina eh, come nascono le sue opere e quindi se ci può suggerire quelli che sono i temi e fonti di ispirazione. So, how Tina? Uh, hello. Uh, could you tell us how your artworks uh, are born? I mean, themes, uh, source of inspiration? Um, well, it's very easy. My inspiration is when I wake up um, and I, I, look, I look through my window and I'm fortunate enough to be able to enjoy the sky and the water and the ever-changing moods which it all produces um, and, and, and so it is, it, is, it is very easy to be inspirational. Um, I, live, I live in the south of England uh, in Devon on, a, on, a, on the estuary and, and so it is, it is an ever-changing scene all, all of the time. So from, from early morning till, till evening um, it's a perfect place to paint. Um, and I feel very fortunate. It's, uh, I'm lucky and, um, and I, 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 can express, I can express everything just by, just by looking out of my window and sitting, and sitting outside too. Um, the noises, the smells um, and, and the atmosphere all, all help to produce, produce work. So I, I do feel very fortunate. And it's there, it's nature, it's, it's, God's, it's God's gift to us, and which, which I can hopefully transform to the feelings and emotions and put them, put them down onto canvas. Um, so, so yes, and that's all I've ever, ever wanted to do, and from very young. So, 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 so I do, I do, <coughs> I, I, do I do enjoy using paint, experimenting with colour, and the paint works, the, the paint tells its own story, and the more you use it, the more it talks to you, and you transform what you see into making something into uh, 2D, and, and, and hopefully people It's can It's a gift, a really gift. Um, I think we all have a gift and I think we, we, we all experience things and, and we, we digest them and then, and then make them appear differently. Okay. So, which, which, which is life and then yeah. energy and yeah. important. And uh, we are lucky to can see your artworks in this exhibition. Thank you. Yeah, thank you <laughs> and it's very kind of you to invite me here to, to show my work and for you to share a little part of England too. So it's very nice, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tina. <laughs> 
Ora siamo con un altro artista eh, che partecipa all'esposizione International Art, siamo con Carlos Matteo eh, che come potete vedere realizza opere eh, con un linguaggio estremamente particolare, eh, si tratta di uno stile che lui stesso definisce pop geometrico. Um, ora io gli vorrei chiedere un attimo a chi si ispira quindi dal punto di vista artistico e soprattutto se c'è qualche artista diciamo che in qualche modo lo ha ispirato. So Carlos, who inspire you on an artistic level? Oh, uh, well, uh, when I was born I was very connected with my grandmother and she was my first uh, inspiration. My grandmother and I was i became like uh, her faithful assistant because she used to create all the gifts for all the birthday parties that we celebrate at home in Cuba. And I was helping her. I was um, doing all, making all the gifts for the boys and girls that come to the party. So that was the first uh, experience. Of, uh, she has a very, had a very high level of creativity. And, uh, and then I was really surprised for that. And then the second person that inspired me was uh, the husband of my aunt, uh, because he was the one who used to make the piñatas for those birthday parties of my cousin, my birthday party. And I said, wow, when I grow up, I want to I wanna make piñatas too. I want to be that creative. And I ended as a young adult to have my own business, piñata business, <laughs> making piñatas. And uh, they were in another level, because I already studied art. So This piñata, they were a little more sophisticated, but that was thanks to, to my grandmother and, and my uncle that I, I got inspired and, uh, and, and, and well, that was my beginning. So the family is very important, yes. no? but uh, who are the fundamental artists uh, during your artistic development, uh, for example? Um, for example, I, I started to study formally art when I was 12, i went to the vocational school of art and there i was studying everything history of art with 12 years old history of art drawing sculpture painting engraving and they introduced me with the uh, uh, the era of renaissance with michelangelo with uh, Raphael, with uh, leonardo da vinci later michelangelo and uh, and uh, i was really impressed i mean that was my, my beginning studying art and uh, And after that, I said, well, if I want to be an artist, I have to be as dedicated and I have to love and I have to feel passion for what I, I have to do. If not, it's better not to be an artist if you're not going to be a real artist. And, uh, and then after that, I was involved with all the uh, Cuban artists from the Bangor. Then they were living in Europe and they had a very strong connection with Picasso, like uh, Wilfrido Land. So I was very related to Wilfrido Lam because he was uh, black Chinese, Cuban, black Chinese, and he was bringing the Cubism uh, and he connected with Afro-Cuban Afro culture. So, and, and then thanks to Wilfrido Lam, he took me to uh, Picasso. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And now the last question, <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, which is uh, the rule and duty Uh, of the artist in today's society? Well, I think that the art is a very uh, uh, important weapon in, in society because uh, uh, through the art you can transmit all kind of message that you want. And, uh, and uh, well, what to say? I mean, the, I have to, every time I do a painting, I have to think and I have to analyze what kind of message I'm going to transmit and why I want to transmit the message. It's not just painting because you have the passion. You have to think and analyze what you're going to do step by step because that's, uh, to me, that's the right way to do it and it's the way I was educated through the art. And, uh, and what to say? I mean, uh, this is basic. It's something basic for performers, for writers, for any type of art. And, uh, and it's a big responsibility because we have to transmit art in a very high level. We have to do the best we can because the future generations are going to be based on what we are doing and uh, they want to use us as a reference. And if we don't do a good art, the future of the art is not going to be good. 
So we are very responsible of create the best art that we can and to transmit it to future generation. Yes, it's a very important duty. <laughs> okay, thank you, Carlos. Thank you. <laughs>